Okay, so now that we've covered some core definitions in uh, probability theory, let, let's go over some examples to, to gain some intuition. In this example, we are going to consider the process of picking fruits from boxes. And, um, well, these boxes have colors. And um, so one time we pick an orange, one time we pick an apple. Sometimes it's from the red box, sometimes it's from the blue box. So we're considering two random variables here. So the first random variable is called, uh, it's the fruit, uh, denoted with f. So f is the fruit and it takes on the values apple, or it can be an orange, denoted with an o. Then we have another random variable, and that's the box that we pick from. Uh, we denote it with capital B. So the box can be either red, red, or it can be blue. And before anything, we, we know uh, which boxes we pick from. So this is our prior knowledge. Uh, someone told me, okay, we're going to do this experience. You're going to pick from these boxes and 60% of the time, 60% uh, of the time you're going to pick from the, the blue box. So the prior probability of picking from the blue box is six out of 10, 60%. And then the prior probability of picking from the red box is 40%. We also know the amount of fruits in each box. So this gives us conditional probabilities. Uh, so suppose we uh, pick from the blue box, then we know there's only one orange in it. So the probability of picking an orange from the blue box is one out of four. So let's write, write these conditional probabilities out. So first let's consider picking uh, fruit being an orange, given the fact uh, that I'm told that I picked it from the blue box, this probability is one out of four. Uh, four. Similarly, the probability of picking the fruit apple from the blue box is three out of four. Uh, the conditional probabilities for the red box are given as follows. So I suppose I want to know what the probability is of picking an orange, given the fact that someone told me that the box is red. This probability um, is six out of eight, which is three fourth. The probability of picking an apple from the red box is then given to be one over four. Okay, so this is everything I know up front. So I have this probability, uh, uh, the, the prior probabilities. So without making any observation, the chance of picking the, the blue box will be 60%. And I know the amount of apples and oranges uh, in inside each of these boxes. Okay, so now we're going to use the rules of probability theory to derive prob uh, probabilities for things that we're interested in. And in this case, we only want to know what is the probability of picking an apple or what is the probability of picking an orange disregarding the box it came from. And this is a marginalization process. So we marginalize out the, 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 the color variable. So we do not care about which color the box was it came from. Uh, and what remains is the, the marginal fruit distribution. Okay, so Let's make use of this uh, marginalization and this sum rule of probability. So the probability of picking an apple equals the sum of the probabilities of picking an apple in either of the two boxes. So I sum over the boxes. Now this is a joint probability, the, the probability of picking an apple from box B. So ha they happen at the same time. And at this point, we do not know this joint probability but we know the product rule of probability. And the product rule says that this joint probability can be recovered from the product of a conditional probability. So the conditional of the, the chance of picking the apple given uh, the fact that I know which box I, uh, I picked from times the prior probability of picking this box in the first place. Okay, and now we have something that we actually know, right? We know all the conditionals and we know these prior probabilities. So let's write out what's happening here. I'm going to use a different color. Uh, okay, so what is the probability of picking an apple from the blue box? That's three out of four times the prior probability of picking the blue box. That's 
um, 6 out of 10. Okay, then the next box. So what is the conditional probability of picking the apple from the red box? That is 1 over 4 times uh, the prior of picking the red box, which is 4 out of 10. And this gives me a probability of 11 over 20. Yeah. Okay, so now I know the total probability of picking an apple and don't, without caring about which box it came from. I can do it similarly for um, the oranges. So I'm going to write that, write this out. And this would give us nine over twenty. Okay, uh, so this is this can be a somewhat tedious process. Though we have computers uh, for us to do this, but conceptually, it's good to make such computations every now and then to, to really get a feeling of what you're, you're dealing with. Uh, but in this particular case, we could have also taken a shortcut knowing that uh, these probabilities all need to add up to one. Um, so that's a normalization property of these probabilities. So we could also directly, so we know that we only have two options. So we could also derive this from the total probability one minus the probability of picking an apple, which was 11 over 20, which also would give, give us a probability of 9 over 20. So this would be a much uh, faster way, of course. Now, in, in this next example, we're going to ask ourselves the question, um, if making part of the observation, so having seen that we picked an orange, for example, does this provide us more information on which box it came from? And, and the answer is yes. And uh, we're going to show that via uh, Bayes' rule. Now. Okay, so Bayes rule said, let's suppose I have this conditional, this posterior, like um, the posterior probability of, let's note it, the posterior probability of observing a red box, given the fact that I observed an orange, is given by the likelihood of the fruit being orange were it to be picked from the red box, times the prior probability of picking the red box divided by the total probability of, of picking an orange um, at all. Okay, so these are quantities uh, that we know. We know uh, the prior probabilities, we know the conditional probabilities, so uh, how many oranges are there in the red box, and we have these marginal probabilities, so the total, uh, sorry, the, the total chance of, of picking an orange. Okay, so now let's use this, uh, this rule, this formula to fill in these probabilities and see what, what comes out. So uh, the conditional probability of picking an orange from the red box that was derived here, um, which is three over, well, six over eight. We have the prior probability of picking from the red box, which is four over 10. Yeah, it's four over 10. And then we have, um, the probability of the picking orange is 9 over 20. So I'm going to invert this 20 over 9. Okay, so um, let's do this computation. Uh, 20 divided by 10 is 2. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. So we have a total probability of 6 over 9, which gives us a probability of 2 over 3. Right? So this is approximately 66%. So this is really interesting because now uh, our prior uh, probability of picking the red box was only 40%. Uh, but now once we have observed an orange, this changes the probability of uh, picking uh, from the red box. And actually it turns out that this probability is 66%. So this is larger than so the probability of picking the red box given that I've uh, observed the orange. It's much larger than my prior. Okay, so in terms of this uh, of these terminologies that, that I re referred to in the previous video, we now have uh, a posterior probability. So after observing an orange, the probability of the box being red is given by 66%. Um, but we also have this, we also had this prior uh, probability. So before observing anything, we had a, a probability of four over 10. Uh, okay, so we have before observing anything, we have a prior probability, and after we observed part of the, the process, we gain more information, 
and we get uh, a posterior probability of the box taking on some color given the fact that I made a particular observation. Okay, then there's uh, another thing to be said about random variables. They can be independent. Uh, so this is really a definition. Uh, of two random variables, x and y, are said to be independent if and only if measuring x gives no information on y and vice versa. So uh, let's, let's formalize this uh, in an equation. So formally, x and y are called independent if the probability, the joint probability of x and y equals the product of each of these individual uh, probabilities. So there's no dependency between the two of them. And we can see that this, this works, that this sort of uh, defines independence in the following way. Suppose there was independence and we want to know what is the probability given my observation y. Then, um, okay, so from the product rule, let's write it over here. So from the product rule, we know that this joint probability is given by probability of x given y times the probability of y. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in here. So the probability of x given y equals the joint probability of x and y divided by the probability of y. And if these uh, variables are independent, then this probability splits into these two separate probabilities of x and y respectively. And then we see that this conditional probability only depends on x. So indeed, if my uh, random variables are independent, well, then we, can, we can, then we can split this joint probability and we can see that uh, the conditional probabilities are only dependent on, well, the, the x parameter and there's no real conditioning taking place. An example, again, in terms of apples and oranges, uh, we have two random variables. We have the, the box color and we have the fruit that we pick. Suppose now in both boxes, we have a ratio of apples to oranges is one. So we have um, apples to oranges is one. The ratio apples to oranges, in this case, it's two over two is one. So they're equal. And in that sense, they do not provide any information on uh, which box I pick from. Right, because if I consider the conditional probability of the fruit, given the fact that I observe the box, it will also be just the total probability of picking this fruit. The total probability of picking apples, so there are in total six apples, there are in total six oranges, so the probability of picking uh, an apple is, is 50% for both uh, of the fruit. And the same also works the other way around. Um, in this case, knowing uh, the fruit does not provide us extra information on the box. And what we're left is is only our prior information.